Okay, so let's start to talk about the polymer size and what do you mean by theory versus experiment. This is a one that is actually coming down to the very practical uh, understanding about how whole, uh, the whole uh, the parameters, some such as a characteristic ratio, persistent lengths, and also uh, persistent lengths and the statistical segment lengths, so the statistical segment lengths, persistent lengths, characteristic ratio, which is shown in the table, are actually being measured by experiment. Somebody has to make, make the polymers with defined molecular weight, and they can measure H. The answer is no, they are not measuring that. Actually, they are measuring the radius of gyration, and the radius of gyration to the square is end-to-end -end vector distance divided by 6 for polymer molecular weight is sufficiently large. Okay? And this has been uh, worked out uh, so that people are using this relationship to actually measure the RG in experiment and then establish the correlation between the molecular weight and RG. And they have found out, of course, the radius of gyration is proportional to molecular weight to the power of 0 0.5, you know, melt state. And that has been the, one of the major breakthrough in the polymer uh, physical chemistry in the uh, 60s and the 70s using the neutron scattering experiment. Okay, so let me take a little step back and to talk about the theory versus experiment. So I've been mainly focusing on end-to-end -end distance and the characteristic ratio or statistical segment lengths using the either number of bonds or number of repeating units. So we can describe that, and this can be pretty much described. Uh, you know, you remember that this one is for flexible chain. It is like that, and for freely rotating chain, two times n L square. For something that hindered rotation, that's about that. And eventually, it is this concept that is being discussed. Uh, and then for, and this constant is actually depending on the number of bonds itself. So they put a sufficiently large, and then you going to a, a asymptotic value. So this this kind of a end-to-end uh, -end distance argument can be derived, you know, uh, very simply from from the, the showing the graph here. Uh, how the radius of gyration? Okay, this if this is picture on the right is the chain segment distribution. We can kind of say, okay, that must be a center of mass. And then we start to, let's say, uh, count the average distance. This one, this one, this one, this one, and that one, right? People can essentially count the average distance from the center of mass and then finally find out, well, the average distance from the center of mass, that's what we call the radius of gyration. That is something called RG. And this is actually not easy to be mathematically derived from the given uh, spatial distribution of polymer chain shown up here. But one thing that is clear is for the uh, chain then doing the random walk, and it has been shown by researchers that mathematically this is can be derived. I remember driving this equation when I took my graduate course uh, at the University of Minnesota. And so the, there's a, well, when, I guess uh, your N is sufficiently large, N is sufficiently large, or molecular weight is sufficiently large, this equation is holding, holds true. So this, this relationship is shown up, and because the beauty of this, the RG is, RG is something that we can be uh, measured by experiment, and particularly light scattering experiment. And then if you do something called a gym plot, and from the gym plot, we can calculate actually weight average molecule weight, radius of gyration, and something called the solvent quantity called 
second variable constant. Those three quantities can be measured, and obviously here I want to emphasize the radius of gyration can be measured by light scattering experiment. We want to briefly talk about that in this uh, in the lecture series later on. Okay, so in, in a simple sense, theory-wise, end-to-end distance square is much easier to be measured. Experiment, radius of gyration. Okay, so that's, the, that's the, really the, the battle between these two. So I just made a, this kind of table that what really happened to make the table below? I mean, you, you remember people write for given polymers, they kind of write this quantities uh, to, to show uh, what they are looking at. And then what did really happen was uh, RG is being measured. And then you can see that that's a 1 over square root 6 times end-to-end uh, -end distance square, right? And so therefore, and then if I want to use one of the relationship, 1 over 6 and then HRMS is, for example, uh, I can use square root number of repeating unit times statistical segment length. Uh, and then the N can be experimentally verified by molecular weight, by measuring molecular weight, and divide by the molecular weight of repeating units. So that's a, what we call the DP. And so DP is being measured. And the N, and the N value is provided. And then the, they, they essentially measure the radius of gyration. And then what people did is they were able to measure the radius of gyration. And you change the molecular weight or the N. Uh, so let's say this is an experimentally has been done, and then they measure that, they find out this is proportional, and what I plot here is a log scale. Okay, so this is a log log scale, and this is a linear, and the slope here is one over half, which means Radius of gyration is proportional to 1 over half. And the freely jointed model or the random walk uh, scaling concept is verified by the experiment. But pretty much what has been done is radius of gyration being measured. And to define the something the root mean square or h is. And then you can relate using the n or you can using the n. You can verify C infinity. You can verify statistical segment lengths uh, for assuming certain uh, bond vector distance. For carbon carbon, remember that L is 1.54 angstrom. And so that's so we can recharacterize the, uh, the statistical, uh, the characteristic ratio on that. And where this one is pretty much from the DP. You can essentially measure this one in a value of uh, angstroms. And for, for example, polystyrene, 6.7. 7 angstrom is about uh, the, the statistical segment length. And that's something that people can use. So let me give you a final thought. And this is actually, you remember, if you go back to my lecture 2.3, there's a section about radius of gyration, and I, I briefly talk about. And then this one is, uh, uh, you know, we, we talked to, I, I discussed here before, for, for polystyrene, let me give that polystyrene, CH2, CH with a using group. This polystyrene with a number of repeating unit, big N, um, they have a density. Uh, roughly speaking, is a one gram per cubic centimeter. So, you know, from the density-based argument, because we know the mass, we know the volume, and then the mass is actually for a poly polymer chain, which is a uh, one million gram per divide by Avogadro's number. That is a mass for a single polymer chain, and then the volume is pi r cube, right? For 
for a single polymer polystyrene chain width m is essentially 10 to the 6 gram per mole right so there is a single chain here and this is the blue shaded area represent uh, the the volume in terms of spare then we can measure that radius and from that this is a value that we got and if you go back to my uh, lectures on 2.2 uh, 2.3 you you can find out the the more detailed information so here now I'm going to show you how the radius of gyration in my lecture 2.3 actually I give you a RG is more like rule of thumb is 0.3 to the molecular weight to the angstrom this is I'm just uh, actually giving out to you at that time but this time now we are ready to actually calculate the actual numbers right? so let's let's do that okay polystyrene you know is an m naught is 104 gram per mole because there are so many carbons and so many hydrogens in in this so the molecular weight divided by m naught which is a dp here and that's what i call n and that is million gram per mole and 104 and how many repeating unit we are not talking about here 9615 repeating units okay so i got that and then the radius of gyration which is a uh, we want to compare that radius of gyration was 1 over square root 6 to n to uh, h rms Right? root mean square and to n distance so 1 over root, root, root square root 6 and then uh, what's my n and then this is an n times the statistical segment length of polystyrene so for PS the value was 6.7 angstrom uh, if you let's just say if you go up yeah that's for the polystyrene, the value is 6.7. So I can use that value uh, to calculate the numbers. Okay, and then the, what do I, what the value that I will use is uh, uh, 10 to the 6. Uh, no, not, not 10 to the 6. Sorry about that. Uh, so what what is my n value? The n value is 9615. So I can just plug everything. That is means nine six one five square root six and then six point seven angstrom, right? Put everything together that what I find that is radius of gyration per polystyrene having statistical segment lengths of B, that's a B um, molecule weight ten million gram per mole is when you calculate that you you'll find 270 angstroms so that's the size of the polymer chain right mm -hmm. uh, and then you remember the my previous just I just give this equation and if you plug it in if you plug it in the M to be 10 to the 6 you will get actually RG is roughly 300 angstrom right this is not a bad one. This is more exact, and depending on the types of polymers, right, the different types of polymers, you will have a different values of Bs, and then you will have a different um, the no ways to count the number of repeating units. You can calculate exact radius of gyration, but they are in the same similar ballpark of the numbers. And then, like I said before, if I say, if I draw the polymer chain in a melt, this is more like a chain looks like it. And that is, the size is here, is about, you know, 300 angstroms, right? And then if I, if I draw the polymer as a dense sphere, uh, I will probably use this one. The, the dense sphere is about seven angstroms uh, that that is shown up here. So it, uh, that's about 70. That's an R with from the density argument, and 270 angstrom from the RG argument, and which is real. This is real. This is a more uh, unrealistic view 
because we are just assuming one chain occupies a dense sphere volume, another chain occupies another dense volume. So but if I just draw this one in a more graphical way, uh, it's about quarter size, right? So that's, uh, uh, mm, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do the other way, okay. So let me, let me share the same radius of gyration. So this is a this is about one about a one fourth. This is about one fourth of RG, and so that's uh, about here. That's one fourth. So that's about the size of the dense sphere if you think about it, right? So this is a dense sphere base volume, whereas the whole uh, the the what is shown in the purple line is an actual polymer chain. So like I said before, what that means is there is a, quite an overlap between the polymer chain that causes an entanglement, okay? And then, then there is a lot of interaction between this chain, so that's why the entanglement is an important concept of polymers. For polystyrene, the entanglement molecular weight is about 120,000 to 150,000, okay, gram per mole. So you can think about having millions, right? You have a many, many entanglements per chain. And so you are typically, I, I would say, I don't know, something like 30 entanglements, many, many entanglements. So this is a very, very large molecule weight. Okay, so actually I come a long way. And, but it's coming down to this, how those these quantities are being quantified. Once you measure the B, once you measure the C infinity, you can easily calculate persistent length and the Kuhn length because there is a very simple relationship as I discussed it before. So experiment is what makes it important for us to measure the real property of individual polymer. But theory gives a very enlightening, enlightening uh, understanding about general features such as uh, uh, size is proportional to the molecular weight. Okay? So this is uh, essentially uh, goes side by side together.